Okay, so here's my alternative theory for the inf for this uh, footage that's been going around the internet lately. Do you see how this um, object? <clears throat> Everybody says it's a, a, an object, but really, if you look at it closer, it actually is an orb. And this is my alternative theory here. I'll show it again, and then I'll circle it here also after this video. But I just want to show you. It. This is basically a beam of light hitting this object in such a way as to light it up from the bottom to the middle of the orb over a hole by the way and then over the top of the orb it's not an object it is an illuminated orb comments below hi everybody it's steve olson wso reporter it is july 13th 2016 and what we're looking at here is the read uh, meteor um, feedback device that we've been talking about in the last couple of videos still huge return stopped abruptly today after we lost the signal for a period of time si signal came back there was nothing on the signal so right now we're looking for answers and clues some people think it's a spaceship some think people think it's just a, a you know broken instrument some people think that um, it could be dust or some kind of cosmic cloud and then probably the more the most plausible or conventional explanation would be the Chinese space station the problem with the Chinese space station being the reason for this signature is just that it, it's not low enough yet in orbit. So that's kind of the problem with that. This next picture I'm going to show you is from the South Pole cam. The, it's a Google cam actually that they do down there. I just want you to notice that we have a pretty intense uh, halo going on in the background. And what you can see is you can actually see it as a, almost as a three-dimensional object uh, back there. It's a pretty cool picture. This next thing that we're going to look at is, again, more footage from the FAA cams, but this is where most of the good information is coming from right now, so check this out. And again, we've got a, a, an object that starts out a red object before the sun comes up, and then it, then it, as it goes over, we're going to play it one more time, you're going to actually see the red object, and then it will actually block the sun in that area as it goes through. Very, uh, very good observation and a good eye by our subscribers once again. I want some of that stuff in my house. Me too. These are the lights over London. <laughs> yeah. My gosh. Wow. Wow. It was like, it's a, look. Look at the colors. I know. That's what I always say to you, Wayne. Steve, look at this, look at that. I know, I know. I know. You gotta look at the colors. What I'm saying. So again, this story is brought to us by the mirror, and again, it's these 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 very weird things that they're recording in London. More signs and wonders. But here's the other interesting. Wow, yeah, yeah, I see, I see. The other interesting thing about this, though, is that the colors that we're seeing is it's uh, it between bright and dull, but after a few seconds, it takes on a redder hue. So it's between blue and red. Uh, the colors that we've been seeing. All right, I'll just put a uh, theory out there. Is it possible under the electric universe theory that what we're seeing is actually plasma reactions? Um, taking place up in the uh, atmosphere. Just a thought. Yeah, well, I had a clear night two nights ago and we got hit with a thunderbolt, no lightning, just a thunderbolt, just a boom, you know? And <laughs> I thought what that was was an upper atmospheric, un, you know, like we, it was so far up, we didn't really see the lightning. Well, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, man. I'm just. I mean, that. if you lived in the mountains here, uh, that kind of phenomenon can happen. But you live in a, a pretty um, relatively low uh, altitude uh, place, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm only 1,200 feet above sea level, man. Well, then the other theory is, Steve, they got you in the radar. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that's pretty nice. <laughs> This little one here is from the Cades. Um, it, it just the sun and the and the clouds kind of come together to make a strange, like almost mushroom cloud shape. Very weird, but still, you know, strange sun. 
So I have to say our best stuff still is coming from the FAA sites, even with all the meteor noise, even with all the earthquakes, even with all the other phenomenon. We're getting the best visuals from up in Canada, I think, still. Here's one from McKinley Park. My guess would be Mount McKinley. And you can actually start to see this orb and the color of its atmosphere, which there's no, been no photo retouching on this. This is just the basically from today. Very, you know, look at that, man. Come on, dude. Come on, dude. Come on, dude. Come on, dude. Can't you see it? Can't you see it? Can't you see, see, see it? All right. <clears throat> More evidence from the sky cams on the north slope. Dun, dun, dun. Can you see it? See how it lights that up and then a second orb shows up behind it? Could those be humongous, humongous planets? I don't know. I'm still trying to figure it out myself, but man, this would be a real... And then you got further shadowing going on of the sun up in here. This would be a really good time to think about your eternal salvation, I think, anyway. Just be prepared, man. You know, let, let the Lord, or just reach out, and I promise you that Yeshua will answer you. Jesus, Yeshua will answer you. Just reach out. He'll do it. He'll be there. Thanks. Well, everybody, I'll show some pictures here, but I wanted to just spend a minute and talk to you. Just kind of heart to heart for a minute. We've shown plenty of good evidence. It's pretty clear what's going on. I just want to make sure that you've been thinking this through properly as you come around to maybe seeing the way I'm seeing it and many of my friends and associates have been seeing it. But also I want to talk to the person that has been alone with this knowledge and awareness for a long time by themselves, beating themselves on the head, wondering why they had to know this information, why they had gone out and learned how to do all kinds of skills or um, you know, learned how to operate ham radios and it was like in 2003 or something and, and all those beat downs and all those like making you feel like an idiot because you were prepared for the 2012 cataclysm. All of you people, those are the ones I'm talking to right now. You weren't ever wrong, man. You just, your timing was off. The second thing is you were also motivated to probably bring a skill or some kind of a gift to the community of people that are going to remain if this event goes down the way we think it will. So I want to turn the whole thing around on you. If you've learned a skill or if you've been aware of this for a long time, you learn many things. Our groups need you. The WSO groups need your knowledge. And we ask that even though you might be prepared yourself, if you could reach out to our local groups through James at WSOWorldwide.com and let us know if you have a skill that is a legitimate preparation skill. We sure could use people like that in our groups right now. And I just want to end up by telling you that I love you all, and I'm praying my heart out for you all. Thank you. Bye.